In this video, I'll talk about using derivatives to find acceleration. The problem is, suppose the velocity of a particle along a horizontal line can be modeled by the function v of t equals 4t squared plus 6t minus 10, where velocity is in meters per second. If the particle's position is at positive 100 meters at time t equals 0 seconds, find first the instantaneous rate of acceleration at time t equals 2 seconds. So first, it's nice to just sketch a real rough uh, picture of what's happening. We have a horizontal line. We've got position 0, and it goes negative also. And I'll put down position 100 because that is at t equals zero seconds. This is where the particle begins at t equals zero seconds. Now, let's talk about the relationship between the position and the velocity and the acceleration functions. So I'll make a little chart here. Just um, There's a, a number of ways to keep it straight in your head. This is one way it stays straight in my head. If you have a better way for yourself, of course, that's the right way. Whatever works to uh, help you remember it. So I've got every column is, is going to be uh, the same. So I'll write in here the position function. The position function in most books are written as, is written as s of t. The velocity would be then s prime of t, the first derivative of the position. And the second derivative of the position function is the acceleration, s double prime of t. Now, if I said that the column is the same, so the velocity s prime of t could be written also as, of course, v of t. So s prime of t equals v of t. And the acceleration then would equal the first derivative of the velocity. So uh, s prime of t equals v of t. v prime of t, the first derivative of velocity, is acceleration. So I'll just finish up by writing the acceleration there, a of t, a of t for acceleration. So let's uh, take the derivative of the velocity function so that we can find the acceleration. So I'll do that. Acceleration, a of t, we know equals the first derivative of velocity. And you probably already read that in your calculus book. Let's just apply it here. First derivative of 4t squared is 8t. The first derivative of 6t is 6. And the first derivative of negative 10 is 0. So now we have the acceleration function. And all we have to do is plug in time equals 2 seconds. So a of 2 equals 8 times 2 plus 6. And 16 plus 6 is 22. So we have 22 meters per second squared. And when you go on to do another application on your own, make sure you pay attention to the labels. Very important. Uh, this one was in meters per second. So, oops, meters per second. So, um, so the acceleration is in meters per second squared. Okay. Let's go on to the particle's position at time t equals 2 seconds. And I'm giving you a little precursor. It's like a, uh, this is, this is going to be like a movie preview. You know, you go to a movie, you think you're watching a movie about acceleration and a derivative. Well, guess what? I'm going to talk about antiderivatives because they are um, related, of course, a derivative and antiderivative. So kind of like addition and subtraction. Derivative the antiderivative. And why am I talking about an antiderivative? Well, because, derivative, because we want to find the position, but we are given the velocity. We're given the velocity function. So if the first derivative of the position equaled the velocity, that means we have to think, well, what what was the position function that we took the derivative of to get to the velocity, right? How did we get here? Well, we had to take the first derivative of something. So we're left with the after the fact here. So we're going to go in reverse. So I'll say the 
position function. I'll put it in green. The position function, s of t, that equals the antiderivative of this. So we know that when we took the derivative, we had to reduce the exponent by 1. So we know it's going to be t to the third. We'll, we took the derivative of something times t to the third to get to, to t squared. And we had to multiply the coefficient by 3, and we got ended up with 4. So you divide by that new, divide by that new um, exponent. So if you don't uh, trust yourself on the remembering the rules, you can always just test it right now. Take the derivative of this, and you should get back to 4t squared. We got it. Good. Now... You can pause it, test this on your own, see if you can get the antiderivative of, of 6t. Here it is. We know it's going to be t squared, right? Because we're adding 1 to the exponent. What did we multiply by 2 to get to 6? Or in other words, divide 6 by 2, and you get 3. Take the derivative of this, and you should get 6t. Got it. Minus, this one is easy. The antiderivative of, of a constant is just that constant multiplied by the variable. If you don't believe it, take the derivative. N the derivative of negative 10t is negative 10. Got it. Okay, what about this? If you take the derivative of some constant, the derivative of some constant, you would get 0. It's like we said plus 0 out here, really. So we have to uh, allow for the possibility of some constant other than zero there. And in fact, we're going to find that the constant is 100. Because if I said that s of zero, we're given a little clue here, at time t equals zero, the position at zero equals 100. And if we plugged in zero everywhere we saw t, then we have four thirds times zero to the third plus 3 times 0 squared, because we have the position function now, minus 10 times 0, plus this constant unknown. Well, all this goes to 0, and we find that c then equals 100. c equals 100. So, now I will rewrite the position function with our known um, constant, and in fact, with the power of video. You can rewind if you want to see this again. I'm just going to scratch this out and say plus 100 to save you a little time so I don't have to, you don't have to see me rewriting the whole function. So this is our function right here. There's our position function. Now let's plug in 2 to find the position at t equals 2 seconds. When t was 0 seconds, the particle started over here. Where, where is it uh, after two seconds? Let's find out. We know the acceleration is positive 22 meters per second squared, but where is the particle? Let's just plug in 2 for t. So s of 2 equals 4 thirds times 2 to the third power plus 3 times 2 squared plus, oops, minus. That's a minus. Minus 10 times 2. Ran out of room. I've got plus 100. That's this part. And I'll just cut to the chase here. Change colors and say S of 2, or after 2 seconds, the particle's position is 97.3 meters. So... We took an antiderivative, but that was the, the reason I did that is so that we could really see the, the, the relationship between position, velocity, and acceleration, and the, how the derivatives work to, to find each of those. And the antiderivative, if you're given the velocity, you would take the antiderivative. Looking down the road, you might be given an acceleration function and be asked to find the position function. And you'd have to be given some information, of course, of uh, initial acceleration and, uh, and initial velocity then, just like we were in this problem. But there you go. Using derivatives, we at least found acceleration, and then we went on to find some position.